All right, guys, here we go. We're going to go through the fourth example problem from the kinematics lessons. Here's a free fall problem, but it's in stages. It's got a, this thing is going to do a couple of different types of motions along its trip. Uh, I got the problem printed out there. I've got my three distances, my three kinematics equations here. Always a good idea to have these handy. Write them out. All right, so we got a 100 kilogram box that is dropped out of an airplane. So let's see, put a box up here. 100 kilogram box is dropped out of an airplane 200 meters above the ground. So here is the ground, this whole distance, 200 meters. Okay, uh, right, first step is to always draw a picture. After freely falling for two seconds, so at some point later, the box is going to be over here, 100 kilograms, D, T, V. Initially, we'll call this position zero. We'll call this time zero, and it is not falling at the beginning, so its speed is zero. It says it's freely falling down here, D, T, V. It's freely falling for two seconds. We need to know how far it's going to be. What speed will it attain in two seconds? But they say something very important. They say it is freely falling. Freely falling is going to tell you the acceleration of the thing is negative 9.8 meters per second squared at that trip. That part of the trip, the acceleration, freely falling, freely falling means acceleration equals 9.8. We're ignoring air resistance and that kind of stuff if it's falling freely. But then something else happens. Something does change. At this point, now it opens a parachute. When it opens the parachute, we're going to get something else to happen, right? So now during this next bit of the trip, some point later, we're going to we'll change again for five seconds, they say. This next trip is for five seconds. What happens here is a parachute opens up. And when the parachute opens up, that produces an upward force of 800 newtons. And Earth is pulling this thing down mg 100 kilograms times 9.8 980 newtons so back to dynamics some of the forces equals ma some of the forces 800 newtons up plus 980 newtons down equals 100 kilograms times the acceleration we get 180 newtons down equals 100 kilograms times A. A equals 1.8 meters per second squared down. So that's very, very important. Acceleration equals negative 1.8 meters per second squared downward. They open up the parachute, and because of those forces, it's no longer accelerating at the same rate. Then... The last part of the trip, it at five seconds after this force acting, it reaches terminal velocity. Whatever velocity this is, it's going to be terminal velocity, and it's going to finish that trip down here at the ground, d, t, v. We don't know what all this stuff is. we got to figure these things out. Right, uh, air resistance five seconds after the parachute is deployed, the box reaches its terminal velocity. To determine the acceleration of the block, the box after the parachute has been deployed, but before it has reached terminal velocity. Yeah, we just did that. To determine the speed of the box as it hits the ground, we'll have to figure out what that terminal velocity is and the total time of flight. Basically, we need to figure this out. Oh, one last thing I should say during this seg segment, it's reached a terminal velocity. So it's not speeding up anymore. So at this point, the acceleration is zero. 
So we got to figure out our D, T, V, D, T, V, D, T, V. We know the accelerations for all these parts. Now it's just do the math. Now it's just do the math. I'm going to erase this to give us some space to do the math. We're okay with that part there being 1.8 meters per second. Per second. Clear out that out of there. All right. The first equation I think we should always go to. The very first equation. Trying to figure out velocity and distance over here. VF equals VI plus AT. Well, let's think. V F is what we want to know. VI is zero. Acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And it was fell for two seconds here. So we're going to get a final velocity of 2 times 9.8, 19.6 meters per second. Negative 19.6 meters per second. That's the velocity at that point. How many, what distance does it take to get to that speed? Mm, it's pretty simple. We can go distance equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Uh, distance is what we want to know. VI was zero. So VIT is going to be zero. One half, 9.8 meters per second squared times two seconds squared. And we're going to get distance equals two squared is four. 4 times 9.8 is 39.2. 39.2 times a half is 19.6 meters. So it will, because this is negative, that becomes negative. It has fallen 19.6 meters. Hmm. Pretty easy. Now here, the parachute opens, and there's an upward force which changes the, the acceleration, but it's still going to gain speed. Again, let's see what we know. Uh, I'll change colors for this portion of the trip. VF equals VI plus AT. We want to know VF. VI is negative 19.6 meters per second. Plus the acceleration is negative 1.8 meters per second squared. And the time was 5 seconds. What does VF equal? VF is going to equal 1.8 times 5. I think that's 9, right? 1.8 times 5 is 9. So we get minus 19.6 meters per second, plus or minus 9, plus or minus 9 meters per second, right? This second cancels out one of those seconds. You get meters per second. So... 19.6 and 9. We're going to get the final velocity here to be a negative or moving downward at 28.6 meters per second. 28.6 meters per second downward. And we kind of know what that is here. This is going to be the same because in this last segment, it's not accelerating. 28.6 meters per second. We just figured that out. Good. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? How? What distance does this cover? Uh, we can use really either distance equations. I think probably easier one would be the VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Its final velocity at this segment here was 28.6 meters per second. 28.6 meters per second squared. Because it's squared, that negative is going to vanish. The initial velocity was negative 19.6 meters per second. But again, it's squared, so that, that's going to vanish. Plus 2 times A, negative 1.8 meters per second squared. And multiply by our, that's what we want to know, the distance. So 228.6 squared gives you some number. Uh, 817.96 meters squared per second squared equals 19.6 squared. 384 
0.16 meters squared per second squared minus 3.6. I'll just multiply those through. 3.6 meters per second squared times our change in distance. Bring this over there. 817.96 minus 384.16. Gives us 433.8 meters squared per second squared equals 3.6 meters per second squared times the change in distance. Divide both sides by 3.6 meters per second squared. Divide both sides by 3.6 meters per second squared. We're going to get a change in distance to be 120.5. One hundred and twenty point five meters equals the change in distance. Again, just to be really careful, uh, second squareds cancel out second squareds. Meters cancel out one of those meters, and we end up with a d in meters, which is what we should be having. So the change in distance here equals one hundred and twenty point five meters. Now that will allow us to figure out this. We know the whole thing here was 200 meters here. And we've gone, how far have we gone? We went almost 20, um, then another 120. So we've gone about 140 meters, 140.1 meters total. So to that point, we've gone 140.1 right from here to here from here to here is 140.1 meters so that means this is going to be 59.9 meters because the whole thing was 200 so this last segment the change in position is only 59.9 meters we've got everything we need except for the time we need the last bit of time so two equations with time, VI and VF, but here the V is staying the same, so we can't use that one. We got to use this other equation here. I'll write it on the I'll write it over here. Uh, change in distance equals VIT plus one half A T squared. This is 59.9 meters. It has dropped 59.9 meters. VI 28.6 meters per second times time plus one half very important the acceleration is zero there multiplied by time squared the fact that the acceleration is zero there is so very useful because that whole thing vanishes because anything times zero is zero and we get negative 59.9 meters equals 28.6 meters per second multiplied by time and by the way that was a negative 28.6 so we divide both sides by negative 28.6 meters per second divided by negative 28.6 meters per second 59.9 divided by 28.6 equals that's another 2.1 2.09 time equals 2. Point, I'll call it 2.1 seconds 2.1 seconds. So what do we know? Determine the acceleration of the box. We got everything filled out. We know this is now 1, 1. 1.8 meters per second squared downward. We figured that out, the acceleration of the box. The terminal velocity, we figured the terminal velocity was going to be velocity terminal equals 28 Point six meters per second and the total time to figure out the total time let's see what do we have to do to figure out the total time it goes from time zero to time two seconds seven seconds plus another 2.1 seconds time total 9.1 seconds And that's the problem. All done.